Welcome to Lex's World. Today I wanted to talk about terpenes and weed as well as in general. Really explain what they are in a way that makes more sense than just saying that they're unsaturated hydrocarbons. So first off, terpenes are not cannabinoids like these compounds found in cannabis. Cannabinoids are their own class of molecules with their own types of effects. In cannabis, the only thing that cannabinoids and terpenes have in common is that they both occur in the same part of the plant, the oily resinous glands. Terpene molecules are responsible for scent and ultimately for flavor too. Lots of plants have terpenes and the rich variety of them out there reflects the variety of plant odors that we have. For those who live near pine trees, you know that sap that runs off the pine tree? Well, that sap contains a terpene called alpha-pinene that gives pine trees their piney smell, as well as taste if you try to bite down on the pines. Cannabis has a fairly high variety of terpenes for a single plant group. That's why there's so many strains of cannabis that smell so different though the most common terpenes are these ones around me right now. If some of these names sound like they're different types of flowers, it's because terpenes are often named after the flowers that they smell like. So long story short, when people talk about terpenes and weed, they are talking about odor and flavor agents. With the basic explanation out of the way, we can now get into the two worlds where terpenes get talked about the recreational marijuana world, and the medical world. In the recreational world, people want their marijuana or product, their infused cannabis product, to have an awesome smell or taste, and that has influenced cannabis growers, breeders, and the industry. You may recall from my Cannabis Breeding Basics episode how many different traits you can breed cannabis for. Well, breeding for terpenes, or simply for smell and taste, is yet another example. But the complexities of breeding aside, a note for you terpene-oriented growers, uh, growing strains for the strongest scent or flavor usually involves growing them indoors, because terpenes get destroyed by high temperature, overly humid weather, wind, rain, and general roughness and plant stress all common problems outdoors, so it's just easier indoors. You can also precisely time the harvest of your grow less around ideal THC potency and more around best terpene point, since terpene composition changes as the plant matures. But some creative entrepreneurs are going further with the terpene idea. They're isolating specific terpenes and adding them to marijuana products that normally have little smell or taste. This leads to all sorts of cool products like marijuana drinkables or concentrates that are infused with limonene, for example, for that lemony flavor that's so common in cannabis strains. Now on to the medical world, where terpenes and cannabis get a little more complicated. There is a theory that terpenes interact with your body and with the better known cannabinoids to change or enhance the medical effects of cannabis and that you can actually identify by general scent which terpenes may be good for which medical conditions. This would add a layer of complexity to breeding the perfect medical strains. Or so the theory goes. I should stress that I'm deeply skeptical of all of that at this point. The relationship between cannabis terpenes and their influence on medical conditions has not been thoroughly studied as of 2017. For now, we only know that some terpenes in some chemical formations do have an impact on the human body besides just giving off scent. Beyond that, this topic is not mapped out well at all. However, I may circle back to the medical terpenes theory in a few years just to see where we're at on it. So subscribe for that. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the show, and if you did, be sure to hit the like button as well, and we'll see you next time.